Well, what a blessing Brother Stan was this morning. I appreciate so much him bringing us the Word of God and looking forward to him preaching to us again tonight. Brother, if you will, come on. Well, it's good to meet God's house one more time, isn't it? He's been good to us. Take your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter number 3. Matthew chapter number 3. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter number 3. I'm going to try to read some of this. If I don't, have to, I, better, I better put my readers on. I ain't got as much light up here tonight. Try these. Okay. I got it now. Yeah. Let's all stand in reference to reading God's Word. I'm going to read a couple of verses here. Get us going here. This, of course, about John the Baptist and his ministry. And to Jesus, you know, they, you know, they tried, all the kings all tried to kill him, get rid of him. And uh, he went back, they took him, God told him to take, go with Joseph, take him back down to Egypt and stay down there and come back up and he went back to Nazareth. And this time it said, in those days, verse number one, in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him, then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to the, his baptism, he said unto them, O generations of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the, from, from the wrath to come. Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance, and think not to say within yourself, We have Abraham to our father, for I send you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with, wa with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is minor than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then cometh Jesus from Gal Galilee to Jordan, and to John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me. And Jesus answered said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he had baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you, God, for the word of God. Father, you speak to us. God, speak through us. Touch me again. Help us. Thank you for the service this morning. But this is a different service and a different message. And we need your help. In Christ's name, pray. Amen. You may be seated. All right. I'm going to talk about these verses here, if I can, and read them again without my glasses. Amen. All right. I'm interested in the phrase where he said, I, I indeed baptize you with water under the premise, but he that cometh after to me is minor than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy of that. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. I like that being baptized with the Holy Ghost. I thought about John the Baptist. Jesus makes a statement about him, says, uh, no greater man has ever been born a woman than John the Baptist. And I, 
I read around, look around, I thought about, man, I, I could build a message on why John the Baptist was so great. And he, one thing, he is the forerunner for the Lord Jesus Christ. He said he had a voice. He had a voice. He come out of the wilderness preaching the word of God. And tell you, we got a voice, and you and I, we got a voice, and we need to speak out. If they tell people about this, what's going on in the world, boy, it in the mess, I'm glad, that, I'm glad they said, we got a better place to go to. And I'm looking forward for that. But John, he, he was a good man. And his work, John, the name John means, we got any Johns in here? We got one good one right there. You know what John means? Jehovah, Jehovah hath been gracious. And we can say, Jehovah has been gracious. Amen. Jesus has been gracious. He is gracious and always will be gracious. Jesus actually is the grace of God. When you're looking at me, you're seeing God's grace. When I'm looking at you that are saved, I'm seeing God's grace. What God's grace can do, man. Grace is beautiful and wonderful. G-R-A-C, that's five letters in it. And in the Bible, what <clears throat> grace, I mean, what five is the number of grace, right? Amen. What about faith? How you spell it? F A I T. That's five. That's grace. Amen. What about Jesus? How many letters in His name? Five. Hmm. What about that? What about blood? Five. That's the way I spell it. In you. Amen. Five. Faith is five. Saved is five. Bibles. How many? Hey, y'all can count good. Amen. Thank you. See what I'm talking about? That's the grace of God. Amen. Saved. Amen. But baptism takes more letters than that, don't hey, John. I mean, hey, but also the Bible tells us in John 10, 41, that John did no miracle. Not a one did he do. Not one. But he's greater than, than, than Jeremiah and, and Isaiah and all them great men. But John, no better born a woman than John the Baptist, amen? And that's a good study to study on that. Hey, hey, he, he, he was the foreclosure of the Old Testament of, of law and the forerunner of the New Testament of grace. He took them both together now. He, I, I say John the Baptist, this is what I say. He is the last of the Old Testament prophets. Yes, sir, he was. I believe it. He, hey, he was a powerful preacher. How, well, I read them verse there. Hey, hey, when he was preaching, he draw a crowd. When he's baptized, he 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 draw a crowd. Uh, that, that's pretty good, ain't it? So, <clears throat> you see me? I can't draw no crowd. I go to places smaller than this. Amen. Sometimes it's preach, but but it's not about how how many people you got. It's how much God you got. If you got God, you got plenty. You got plenty to talk about and, and plenty to do and plenty to worship. Amen. That's what, what that's the thing. We come to the house at God and it trains us to worship God and to praise Him. Just just allow us the opportunity to be in His house. I mean, I was thankful this morning. I was able to get out of the bed this morning. Then I could put my shoes on and, and clothes on and eat breakfast and do that and get ready and come to the house. God had good hot water in the shower and, and some bar soap. I used it too. Amen. And come to the house of God, get to go, and, and get to open the Bible and preach the Word of God. Now, I can't preach like this guy, that guy, that guy, that guy, but I sure like to try. And, and I don't try to be nobody else. I'm just going to be me. Brother John, when I try to be somebody else, I mess up who I am. Now, that's bad enough. I can mess myself up anyway. Uh, hey, well, hey, John, was, he was a powerful preacher. He could draw a crowd. Hey, he was, he was playing in his dress. That's corner of verse. He's playing in dress. Hey, 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 his testimony. I like his testimony. And John 3, 30 says, do you know what John the Baptist said? He said, he must increase and I must decrease. Now, that's a good testimony. Now, hey, it's all about him. Jesus first. It's got to be, got to be. Hey, man, hey, hey, Spurgeon said this about him. said, and John was the first Baptist minister to lose his head through dancing. Remember, Herod's, Herod's wife, daughter, said, he told prophecy, I think, because she's dancing good, and all people out there said, hey, what do you want? So I'll give you up to half my kingdom. Said, his mother, her mother told her, said, I want the head of John the Baptist. He didn't want to do that, but he did because of that. Hey, hey, hey they put that head in that church, they took it, they probably walked across that dance floor with that head, and he probably said, repent. That was his message, repent. Repent, 
repent. If you don't repent, likewise you shall perish like that religious crowd, amen. They wasn't saved. They just related. Amen. He did that. And <clears throat> What about that? And he preached that repentance. And Jesus come on after him and, and, and started preaching repentance. So he picked right up, but Jesus added some things to it, and we'll get that in just a few minutes. But thank God for the stories of John the Baptist in the Word of God. Amen. He, he did it. Could you imagine? I, I thought about me. I reckon who's a watching follow me? Who, who am I forerunning for? Who's going to follow me after I leave? What about you, the same thing? Does your, your children follow you? Does your wife follow you, or do you follow your wife? I think you ought to walk together. Amen. I thought they put that. That's not in my notes. I thought I mentioned it. And, and also, in John chapter number 3, turn over there, because I want to mention something here. It, it may be a help us. Amen. And of course, you know the great story. <clears throat> Because when Jesus told him, he told him one of this religious crowd, and this one in John chapter 3, Nicodemus, he's of that religious crowd. And he says, you know, he said, bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. And I'm going to talk about that baptism in just a few minutes as my second point. In John chapter number 3, I'm going to read this and see what it says here. It says, verse number 1 says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these things, these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. He said, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. If he knows who he was, he say, he is God come to teach. Amen. He says, verse number three, Jesus asked, asked, answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So he went to Jesus, asked him about the kingdom of God. Because over here before I read the verses in Matthew, he's talked about the kingdom of heaven. I'm not going to get into that, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, because there is a little bit of difference there, but not a whole lot. But he's mentioned over there the kingdom of heaven. And that's the reason that the, the, these Jews and people come to John the Baptist to be baptized because they was wanting to get into this kingdom. See, a kingdom's got to have a king. And Jesus is king of kings and lord of lords. Now, the church is not the kingdom of God, but the church is in the kingdom of God. Amen? And how do you get in it? Hey, by baptism, the kingdom of God. John 3.3, 3, I read it about the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 4.20 says this. He says, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. And what's that power? It's the power of the Holy Spirit of God. That's the only way to get in. You've got to be born again, born of the water and a spirit to get into the kingdom of God. That's how sinners get in. Hey man, he said, Romans 14, 17 says this, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. You notice what that said now? Hey, not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Where does our righteousness come from? The Lord Jesus Christ. Our righteousness are as filthy rags, but his righteousness is perfect. That is why John the Baptist realized that it was okay for him to baptize Jesus. What does it say in verse number 11? And Jesus said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him and baptized him. That's in chapter number 15 in Matthew. To fulfill all righteousness. That's, he said it us. He's talking about him and John to do that. Amen. And he says in verse number 11 of our text, I'm going to read it again. Here's where the meat of the message is. Hopefully, amen. He said, I indeed baptize you with water 
unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He's talking about, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now John's baptism was water, water unto repentance. Now, is that what it says? He says, I baptize water unto repentance. Baptize means to immerse. And immerse means to plunge, drop or dip into a liquid so as to cover completely. To absorb deeply. And I say, absorb deeply, I mean, I believe that's getting all the way down into the heart. Amen. Get absorbed. Because that's where the Holy Ghost goes when he moves in. He moves in to her heart. Amen. Baptized signified originally, uh, signifies uh, originally to tend, or I mean to, to tend, to tend slightly. That's what it mean, originally meant. He said, in verse it means to cleanse or wash anything by application of water. And if you go back to the Old Testament, man, everything, they had to wash this and wash that and cleanse this and cleanse that every time they went to the house of God, wasn't it? Just aim like everything to cleanse this, cleanse that. Even in, you go to, uh, what is it up? Let's see, Numbers chapter number 19, where they had, had the, the story about the red heifer. I'm not go back up because of the time. Have it. And they'd take that red heifer and kill it. And they would take and burn it, have its ashes. And when they went to purify something, they put water in with those ashes. Even if a person walked into a room where a dead person was, they had to be clean. They had to be cleansed. And they just washed them. That's the reason the, the rich guy got on Jesus said for his, his disciples gleaning some, some of the, the corn and stuff off when they was eating, when they was hungry. So they didn't wash their hands. Unclean. See, cleansing, cleansing. And that's what the Holy Spirit of God does when he moves in us. He goes to cleanse us and cleaning us up. Right? Blood washes all our sins away, don't it? Amen. Hey, hey, they're not in a bag behind God's back. They, they blood washed them away. They're gone. That's that cleansing. Hey, man. Hey, hey, John the Baptist did it. Here's what he done. He used the custom as Gentiles, when they uh, say Gentiles or other uh, uh, people, part proselytes, wanted to join the Jewish religion, start, start falling and worshiping like they did. Guess what they did, John? What the people did? They baptized them. They baptized them. That's what they done. He took that. John took that. Hey, John used the custom of Gentile, baptized them, others in Jewish religion, as it was called, calling the Jews into a new dispensation and the, and the fitness for the pure reign of the Messiah. It's pointing to something. Hey, John applied an old ordinance to a new purpose, to the pure in heart and life. That's what the Holy Ghost does. Hey, John says right here, I indeed baptize you with water unto repent. Watch that word unto. What's that mean? It means unto, don't it? What does unto mean? It's easy. It means to. T-O. It means to. I baptize you with water to repentance. And it also means until. I baptize you with water until repentance. Now Jesus had not been to the cross. He had not died yet. So, so they didn't get baptized yet. When you bow on your knees after the resurrection, death and resurrection, after you bow on your calling and calling your name, that's when you get baptized with the Holy Ghost of God. That's when he's put in there that unto. Amen. Unto. And you know what repentance is? Repentance is a, it's a change of heart, a change of, of mind, and a change of direction. When you get saved, you're just going this way. But as you got saved, you're going that way. You're going the right way. You're going the upward way and not the downward way. You're not going east, you're going west. If you will. You know, an east wind is kind of rough wind, though, but a west wind is smooth and calm. Compared to an east wind. Amen. You get going in the right direction when you get the Holy Spirit moving in you because he guides us and directs us in the way we need to go. And that's why that Jesus Christ come, he baptized us with the Holy Spirit of God. 
He baptized us all over with it, if you will. It ought to be, hey, it, the Holy Ghost God, it ought to be seen in her feet. It ought to be seen in her hands. It ought to be seen in her eyes. And we ought to have a smile on her face. Because mm, we're not going to hell. Because, hey, we were, I don't know about y'all, but I was a pretty bad sinner. I sinned every day, and guess what? I still sin some, but I'm a saved sinner. Amen. I'm saved. And I do mess up. And y'all probably do too, but I ain't going to say y'all. But I don't know. But there's a lot of people think, say, since because they're saved, they say they don't sin, they lie. <laughs> I ain't sinned since I got saved. You lying devil, you. <laughs> That's right. You can just look at somebody the wrong way and sin. You, you can tell a lie not, not even mean to. That's a sin. You see what I'm talking about? That's why we got the Holy Ghost God. He, he moved in where he can guide us and direct us. Repentance is turning away from sin, disobedience or rebellion, and turning back to God. Get back in. Here's, I wrote this down. I call it true repentance. Amen. True repentance is a godly sorrow or <clears throat> godly sorrow for sin and an act of turning around and going in the opposite direction. A true repentance at least to a fundamental, I like that big word, don't you? That's got about four or five syllables in it. I can't use but two or three. I mean, I had trouble spelling words like short sleeve shirt because there's too many words in it. Amen. Fundamental. Amen. And a person in, in, in his relationship to God. And we are fundamentalists. Amen. We are that. Amen. Hey, here's the key thing about this baptized by by the Holy Ghost. It's a spiritual baptism. That means it's eternal. It's spiritual. It's about eternal things. And that's what we ought to have our eyes on. Seek ye first the kingdom of, you know, kingdom of God and his right. Said, all these things be added to you. And what he's talking about there is just food and raiment. That's all we promise is, is food and raiment. God said to take care of us. If he'll take care of the spires, and, and we're worth more than the spirals to him. Amen. And he watches over every one of them. He watches over everything he created. He's got it all under control. Amen. Then it says here in that verse, he said he baptized you. I water he baptized you with, with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now, isn't that interesting? Now, that's talking about another baptism. Did y'all get that? Fire speaks of judgment. Those who accept Christ get baptized with the Holy Spirit of God. Those that don't accept Christ get baptized with fire and they'll be cast into a lake of fire one of these days. They said, well, I don't believe that. What did the next verse say? Hey, baptize you uh, <clears throat> baptize you with fire. In verse 12, it's plain. It said, where whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, and he will burn up burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. That's what he's talking about baptizing the lost with fire. That's what he's gonna do. And, he, and in church we have what? We have church people, and we have the tires, or the tars, however you want to call that. And God himself, he will separate them. He'll separate the ones that's baptized with the Holy Spirit of God and separate them that's going to be burned. He's going to separate the saved from the lost. That's about the best way to put it there. That's the why it says there. I, th I thought for a long time, I said, well, fire speaks of his presence. And it does, because I mentioned about uh, Moses in that burning bush. There was a fire there, and the presence of God was there. And as you went, well, a lot of times we say, boy, that preacher's on fire. What does that mean? Hey, he just, the Holy Ghost is in him. He, he, he's preaching like a wild man. He's on fire for God. He's doing this, doing that. Hey, and he's on fire. That church is on fire for God. Trying to keep people out of the fire. Exactly what it was. Mm, what about that? But Jesus Christ preached the same message when he come along 
He started out repentance, but he really done more than that. He started out repentance. John preached repentance. That's, that's what he was doing. That's what he did. He baptized with the water because that, that's what they did, get people to join into the join them in and say they're okay to be Jews and, and worship with us. But Jesus Christ did something different. In Mark, 1, Mark chapter 1, verse 14, 15 says, verse 14 says, Now after John was put into prison, and of course you'll find out in where he's put in prison. Jesus heard about that, and Jesus started preaching. Hey, that man. He said, Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. And verse 15 said, And saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. He says, Repent and believe ye the gospel. Believe the gospel. You got to believe. That's how you get baptized with the Holy Spirit. Just got to believe. That's how you get the Spirit. Just believe. Believe God. Believe His Word. Hey, Romans 10 and 17 says it. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We got to have the Word of God. And that's what we're to go by. Hey, 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 he's preserved this thing down through the years. I don't know about y'all, but I say y'all use the same Bible I do. That's the King James Bible. Amen. Them other things, just somebody else's opinion and things that they wrote down and, and sell them for money. And they make a profit off of them. But this right here is our profit. The Word of God is profitable. It's profitable for us, for those that are saved. Hey, Jesus said the gospel. You got to have that gospel. I thought maybe you could say the Old Testament was man age, and then you got the gospel age, then you got the spirit age. Amen. We live in a spirit age, and He's our guide and our director. Amen. I thought about Matthew twenty-eight. Remember that great commission. If you ever had missionaries come here, they'll preach out of those verses out of Matthew chapter number twenty-eight and verse number nineteen twenty. Let me read them to you. It says Jesus tells us what to do in verse number nineteen. He says, "Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost." There's the gospel, the Trinity. You baptize them. That's that's what connects us. That's what connects us together. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost of God. The death, burial, and resurrection is the gospel of the darling Son of God. What He done for us. Verse 20 says, Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Now, this is a baptism of repentance because of what Jesus Christ done for the gospel. Now, what it does, let me, read, let me read this right here, 1 Corinthians 2, 4. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know, because they are neither, they, they are spiritually discerned. The things of God come through the Holy Spirit of God, giving it to us. As we need line upon line and precept upon precept, that's how we get it. Here a little and there a little. You can take and read this Bible through a thousand times if you want to in your lifetime, and you still will not have it all because you can't, you can't understand it all. But the Holy Ghost will give you what you want when you need it. That's the reason when you get a message up, you don't just go out here and let me get back up here. Y'all can hear me. Hey, hey, you just don't go out here and let somebody else preach and say, take and write their message down. See? This morning, there was a service this morning, right? We had one. And there was a message for the service this morning. Now, this is another service night. Now, we've got another message for tonight. Well, how'd you get them? In the study, praying and asking God to help us and give us something. I was working on this message and I didn't have it finished. And I still hadn't gotten it finished when Brother Leroy called and God opened the door. And it's amazing how I can be in our study and, and trying to get write something down for maybe somebody calling me preaching and, and be studying. Seem like when you get a message built up, God open up the door for you to preach it. Now that's the Holy Ghost. 
Don't get that. It's Holy Ghost. And I'm supposed to preach with the Lord and the Holy Ghost to God. Amen. Hey, hey, the spiritual baptism put us into the family of God forevermore. And the one in 28, that's as you baptize God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Ghost, God. So you know what that does? Listen to this now. I know y'all going to like this. I believe you will. Hey, you know what that does? The name of them, that, that identifies, that certifies that we belong to him. When you, when you go up here and go through this baptism pool, you got any water in it now? No, nah, I ain't got no water in it. Hey, man. So I ain't going to get in it. I don't need to. Hey, hey, but that identifies, that certifies. I remember years ago, the churches, if, if they baptized you, they'd give you a certificate saying that's when you got baptized. Well, oh, you got baptized with the Holy God when you, when you had exercised faith in him and repented your sins. And he come in, you, you got baptized with him. That's water. It's kind of like John the Baptist, it, it shows the cleaning. That's saying, you, you know, you die with him, you resurrect him, you're going to live for him. But it, it certifies. You know what the certify means? It means make known. It means to make known. You, you make, make, letting the world know that I'm saved, and you use it to forget people to join the church too. In the Baptist church, you have to be baptized in, and you've got to have that submersion, or they won't as you come in. I don't agree with all that stuff, you know. But if they baptize the Holy Spirit of God, they welcome. Amen. And sinners are welcome in the house of God. Amen. And they could hear some. But see, when I was born into the Edwards family on April 5th, 1949, you know what they done? You know what that doctor done? Or that nurse, whoever it was? They took and they put a little, I guess back in the 40s they had them little braces put on you. They, they, put, they put my name on her. Stanley Horace. Edwards Jr. Born, I believe, something, 130 something, and I don't know, sorry to believe it was. Anyhow, I, I was there, but I don't remember nothing. I wasn't old enough to remember nothing, amen. Nine months old, all I was. I couldn't even say nothing. But anyhow, you know what that thing done? That certified, that's my certificate, that I belong to the Edwards family. Now, if they'd have made that thing out, if that nurse been high for that doctor, you know what happened? He said, put down there, Stanley Horse. Jones, Junior. That, that would identify me with the Jones family. But I come from the Edwards family. So when we go through that pool right there, that said I belong to him. That us, he said, you know what it said? You know, what we said when we do that? I've been bought with a price. I'm not my own. So all I can do is glorify God in my body and my spirit and just give him the glory for everything that's done. Hey, I give him glory because I got out of bed this morning. I give him glory because I got to come to the house of God. I got to preach the word of God this morning and I'm trying to preach it tonight but my voice ain't uh, corporate me because my voice is mad at me, I guess. I don't know. But it, it shouldn't be that way. The mother's coming at me. That woman says to get mad if they want to. Amen. Amen. Hey. Uh, repent. Hey. Hey. We're not our own. We've been bought with a price so we can glorify God in our body, in our spirit, which is God's. It belongs to him. Shirley thinks I belong to her, and I do. I have no problem thinking that way. Anything she says do, I say, yes, ma'am, I do. I got, I got the last word in the other week, I tell you, did. That's unusual, we get the last word in there. Come forth. And they say, if he hadn't said Lazarus, said everybody in the grave would have come forth that were saved. 
You know what Lazarus said when he come out? Can I tell you, you got to read him between the lines sometimes. Daniel, when he's in the, in the den of lions, he read him between the lines. The lions kept their mouth shut. Y'all get that? You got to read him between the lines. You know what Lazarus said? He said, he looked at him on great mother. He said, loose him and let him go. He looked at great mother. I want to be caught dead by another phone. Amen. That's right. And he was right. That way he had him wrapped in grave clothes, him alive. And then in the next chapter, he was sitting at the table eating with Jesus. And then that's when that, that, that Mary, she opened up that alabaster box, you know. And the, the, the aroma, the aroma filled the house. I like it when the aroma of the Holy Ghost God fills his house. And we get stirred up about who he is. What he's done, what he's going to Hey, the answer is that you ain't seen nothing yet. You just wait till we get on the other side. You say, man, I sure glad I was baptized with the Holy Spirit of God. Look what he's showing me now. Hmm. Man, I'm almost through and I'm fixing to get started. I mean, I can't, I can't imagine. Hey, Romans 10 4 says this right here. For Christ is the end of all the law of righteousness to everyone that believeth. Amen. I guess got a few things I wrote down about this Holy Spirit of God. And I guess it could be a good outline or something to preach. I don't know. But he, he's got some names in the Word of God. The first one is what he's talking about. He's the Holy Spirit. Then he's the, he's the Spirit of grace. He's a spirit of burning. He's a spirit of truth. He'll guide you in all truths. He won't lie to you. And all he talks about is Jesus. Everything he does and says points to Jesus, points to Jesus, points to Jesus. And we got the Holy Ghost. Everything we're saying, they want to point to Jesus, points to Jesus. That's him. That's him. What was it? Pilate said, behold the man. That means look, see, look, behold. Boy, we need to behold him, don't we? And people need to behold him in us. We ought to be excited about serving God. But we're excited, able to go, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm 73 and a half years old, and I'm still excited about what I got back, back over 30-something years ago. Still excited about what he's done. Hey, hey, he's a spirit of truth. He's a spirit of life. If you got any life in you, Some, some of these, we got some expert fishers in our church. They go fishing all the time. They say about how big they are. I said, I can hear how big them fish are up there in heaven in that river. I can tell them exactly how big they are. They said, how big are they? I said, they're the perfect size. So everything in that country is perfect. When you and I get there, we're going to be perfect. We're going to be just like him. Man, I know that don't bother y'all. That excites me. Amen. Because who is what he done? Hey, hey, hey. The spirit of, hey, he's the spirit of wisdom and knowledge. And he's the spirit of promise. What he promised, he'll do. He said he'd take care of it. He said we're going to a better place, and we are. Hey, he's the spirit of glory. And sometimes in the Bible, I, did, I looked up some verses, but I forgot to write them down. Sometimes, sometimes glory. Most of the glory is all a gift from God. It's a 
He created, and you, I, you know, everything that I got's got my name on it, Miss Shirley's name on it. It belongs to Him because He can take it at any time. Our life's in His hands on this earth. He's the greatest thing that ever happened to me. He's the greatest thing that ever happened to you. And everywhere I go, He goes. And everywhere you go, He goes. And everything He got belongs to us too. Because we're married in that family. We're married in it. Chosen. The Bible says many called, but few make the few are chosen. That simply means many are called, but few make the choice. They turn him down. Let me, I got something here. I wrote something out down here between the save all. Hey, I'm almost finished now. Now listen to this. I wrote this down. Got it right here. You can see it. I mean, if y'all can read right now, let you read it. I broke down here, an offense against the Holy Spirit. Hey, by the sinner, and what the sinner meant to do, they, they exist so that you don't get saved. And they, hey, hey, they, they can solve you. Huh? And, and they blaspheme But to say, but to believe, hey, we can grieve you. I'm finished. Let's all stand. Amen. 
Our Heavenly Fathers, we bow before us once again. Father, I thank you for your word and your will. Father, if I say anything wrong, that's my fault. I love you. Bless this church. Bless your passion. wife. God, give them a good vacation. And God, as we go our separate ways, God, wash over, keep safe. Father, this morning, tell you that I love you. You've been good to me. God, you blessed me today. God, you hit me. And God, I just want to serve you. A lot of people want to be pastors and deacons and all that other kind of stuff and song leaders, and that's good. We've got to have them. But Father, I just want to be a servant. Whatever you want to do, that's what I want to do. I love you. Pray. Thank you. Man. So good. Bless this church in a special way. The next time I get to come, be thy will. Maybe the building will be full up. And God, and I could, I'd preach to them too. God, I should preach to this crowd just like with that big crowd. It's no difference. All about you in here. It's about you. Father, I love you. I pray you. Thank you for saving my wretched soul. Thank you for your benefits, your blessings, and your beauty of holiness. Thank you, God. Thank you for your grace and mercy and long suffering. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You're dismissed. Go get your ice cream or something. Kool-Aid.